Good day, dear students. Hope you have completed all the activities posted in the discussion forum. If you haven't for any reason, do complete them before listening to this presentation. In this presentation, we will learn about the Global System for Mobile Communication, which is abbreviated as GSM. We'll also have a quick glimpse of CDMA technology. GSM is an open and digital cellular technology used for transmitting mobile voice and data services operating at 850 MHz, 900 MHz, 1800 MHz, and 1900 MHz frequency bands. GSM technology was developed as a digital system using the time division multiple access technique for communication purposes. In this session, uh, we will start with an introduction on uh, mobile communication. Then we will also discuss in detail the GSM architecture, the components that are present in GSM and the advantages of GSM. And finally, a very short glimpse of CDMA technology as well. Now let us start with a brief introduction of mobile communication system. In fact, we have uh, discussed this in detail in the previous sessions. Mobile communication is the use of technology that allows us to communicate with others in different locations without the use of any physical connection, wires or cables. Mobile communication makes our life easier and it saves time and effort. A mobile phone, it's also called as a mobile cellular network, a cell phone or handphone, is an example of mobile communication. It is an electric device used for full duplex two-way radio telecommunication over a cellular network of base stations known as a cell site. In this brief video clip, uh, you will see the overview of a GSM architecture and the components that are present in a GSM architecture. We all know that there are two types of systems available as GSM and CDMA. We will only study the basics of GSM system. GSM stands for Global System for Mobile. GSM is nothing but a big system made up of few small systems such as mobile stations, MS, base station subsystem, BSS, network and switching subsystem, NSS, operating subsystems, OSS. The architecture of this GSM network is as shown. Mobile station, MS. MS is nothing but the device used for communication, such as cell phone, fax machine etc. Base station subsystem BSS. BSS gets connected to MS via radio interface. It has two different blocks as BTS base transceiver system and BSC base station controller. Practically every MS gets connected to BTS of that area. This BTS sends the signal to BSC. Many BTS are connected to one BSC and at the end of this BSC is connected to MSC. Hence BSS system consists of BTS and BSC. Network and switching subsystem NSS. This system mainly contains MSC. MSC is the backbone of the entire network. It controls all the operations from setting up a call till the handoff procedure. Other blocks of NSSR, HLR, Home Location Register, which keeps the database of all the users who reside in the same geographical area. VLR, Visitor Location Register, keeps the track of all the users who are visitors for that particular geographical area, mainly roaming customers. AUC, Authentication Center, mainly controls the authentication of the users by checking their SIM numbers etc and sends the required information to the MSC. As we have seen, GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communication. It is a digital cellular technology used for transmitting mobile voice and data services. 
There are features of GSM that account for its popularity and wide acceptance. They are improved spectrum efficiency, international roaming, low-cost mobile sets and base stations, high-quality speech, compatibility with integrated services digital network which is abbreviated as ISDN and other telephone company services and it also supports for new services. To understand the GSM architecture, it is important for us to know the functional units that are present in a GSM network. So a GSM network comprises of many functional units and the GSM network can be broadly divided into the mobile station MS, the base station subsystem BSS, the network switching subsystem NSS, the operation support subsystem OSS. Now, let us see in detail the purpose of each of these functional units. For the subscriber, a mobile telephone call is a simple process. In reality though, this call is only possible thanks to a complex network architecture consisting of various different network elements. In this lesson, you'll get to know the individual elements of the GSM network and their basic functions. The base station subsystem, BSS, provides the connection between the mobile stations and the network subsystem, NSS. The NSS forwards user signals to other mobiles via the BSS, or subscribers in the public switch telephone network, PSTN, and provides necessary customer data. The operation and maintenance subsystem, OMS, monitors BSS and NSS performance and remotely debugs occurring faults in the network elements. Additional components such as interface elements to data networks, the short message service center, or the voicemail system, complete the GSM system architecture. The base station subsystem ensures as complete a network coverage as possible and includes a large number of structurally organized radio cells. It consists of the following elements. The base transceiver station, the base station controller, and the transcoder. The central element of one cell of this kind is a transmitting and receiving unit known as a base transceiver station, BTS. This makes the connection to the mobile station via the air interface and controls the transceiver, TRX. The transceiver, the central functional unit of the BTS, maintains calls to a maximum of eight mobile stations via one frequency pair each. The BTS is also responsible for the monitoring of the signal quality and the encoding and modulation of useful signals. Via the ABIS interface, it forwards calls, signals and control information destined for the OMS and the NSS to the base station controller, BSC. Several BTSs are controlled by the base station controller, or BSC. This assigns free radio channels in the TRX for the link to the mobile station. It controls necessary output power for mobile station and TRX. It monitors the existing radio link to and from the mobile station and controls handover between neighboring radio cells if they're under its control. During an existing radio connection, the BSC monitors its quality and controls disconnection of the radio link when the call is over. The BSC communicates with the transcoder, TC, via the ATA interface. The transcoder is the third element in the BSS and is needed to convert 64 kilobits per second original speech into a 16 kilobits per second signal of speech description parameters to ensure a spectrum efficient modulation on the air interface. BTS, BSC and TC together form the base station subsystem, BSS. The base station subsystem forwards the signals to the network subsystem, NSS, where speech and circuit switch data are controlled and forwarded to other networks if necessary. The NSS provides data relevant to security and mobility. The speech signals processed by the transcoder reach the Mobile Services Switching Center, MSC, via the A interface. 
The MSC serves as a digital exchange for the forwarding of messages, connecting mobile subscribers with each other or with subscribers in other networks such as the public switch telephone network, the ISDN network or data networks. The MSC is responsible for the following functions. It forwards incoming and outgoing calls. It makes a connection to other MSCs in the same mobile radio network and makes connections with other mobile radio networks and to fixed networks. It monitors and controls the calls. It's responsible for call data acquisition and the forwarding of signaling information to connected registers or databases. In order to monitor, route and control mobile telephone calls in GSM networks, several registers are connected to the MSC. One of these registers is the Visitor Location Register, VLR, which is usually to be found in the MSC but is a functional unit in its own right. It's designed as a dynamic subscriber file with dedicated geographical areas of responsibility, the so-called location areas. The VLR acquires the data of all GSM customers in its areas and is always well informed of their whereabouts. It assists the MSC in the acquisition of charge relevant data with subscriber information. The bills are prepared from these data in the billing center. But where does the VLR get the GSM customer data from? For GSM customer data acquisition, there is a register, the so-called Home Location Register, HLR, in which each network operator registers the customer data necessary for dealing with traffic. The HLR supplies these data to all VLRs in which the GSM customers involved are to be found at any given moment. Inversely, the VLR in question informs the HLR of the location area of the customer and is thus able to give routing information when calls come in. The HLR data contain information on access rights with regard to roaming, service rights with regard to voice, fax and data services, and additional subscribed services. The Authentication Center, AUC, contains the customer data necessary to protect connections against unauthorized access and is mostly integral to the HLR. The AUC checks the information stored in the subscriber identity module, that is the SIM card, for correspondence with its own register. If the data proves to be identical, the authentication of the subscriber is successful and he's given permission to enter the network. If the SIM card is stolen, authorization to access the network is disabled very easily via the AUC. Additionally, the AUC provides necessary information to cipher the air interface. The Equipment Identity Register EIR, can be implemented as an option by the network operator. The EIR permits the detection of stolen terminal equipment used in GSM networks by checking the IMEI International Mobile Equipment Identity against the data stored in the EIR. This check is carried out independently of the SIM card and only applies to the mobile station in question. All the components which control and forward the call and are responsible for security and mobility management that is the MSC, HLR, VLR, AUC and EIR form the network subsystem NSS. The GSM network is monitored and controlled from a central point. This is the Operation and Maintenance Center, OMC. The OMC has the following tasks. The fault management system analyzes alarms from the BSS elements. When faults occur, they're eliminated when necessary via software command or in situ by technicians. The configuration management function installs the software when new BSS network elements are implemented, manages hardware inventory lists, 
and changes operation parameters, for example, for radio frequencies of a BTS. The software management system feeds in new software or updates and manages the software inventory lists. The Network Management Center, NMC, assumes special functions in the context of OMS which are not defined in the GSM standard but are based on definitions of the International Standardization Organization, ISO, and on recommendations of the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. An NMC carries out functions of performance management. Alarms and fault elimination times are evaluated statistically. Capacity bottlenecks in the network are detected and the service quality is monitored, for example the dropped call rate in percent. Depending on the network operator, the NMC functions are carried out in a centralized or decentralized way in the geographical areas. All NMC and OMC of a certain defined geographical area form the third subsystem, the Operation and Maintenance Subsystem or OMS. The three subsystems BSS, NSS and OMS are vital for the operation of a GSM network. The interfaces within and between the subsystems are mostly specified by the ETSI. For dealing with customer support and supplying certain services, GSM includes a number of additional components. The Administration and Billing Center, ABC, transfers customer data to the appropriate registers of the NSS and into the AUC and the HLR. The Administration Center is connected to the Personalization Center for SIM cards, PCS, via an interface. This makes it possible to disable the SIM card if necessary and protect it from abuse. The so-called call detail records are used in the billing center for bill preparation. The voicemail system, VMS, is a memory system for voice, data and fax messages spread over the network. In other words, a large-scale answering machine. If a subscriber has switched off his mobile station or can't be reached for other reasons, the messages are not sent to his mobile station but are fed directly into the VMS and stored there. The subscriber can either request them from the VMS or he's notified via SMS. The VMS can have interfaces to several MSCs and to the short message service center. Via the short message service center, SMSC, network operators, service providers and private customers can send short messages directly onto the mobile station of any subscriber. In the SMSC, the short messages are stored temporarily and forwarded to the recipient. Point-to-point -point short messages are alphanumerical messages with a maximum basic length of 160 characters, which are entered directly via the keyboard of the mobile phone. Compression and concatenating techniques increase the number of transmitted characters. The cell broadcast SMS that is, the service offering point to multi point short messages is a one way communication from the network to all mobile phones in certain geographical areas. The messages, with a basic length of 93 alphanumerical characters, are entered in the OMC, fed centrally into the BSC, and transmitted to the mobile stations via all connected BTSs at regular intervals. In order that data can be fed into the GSM network from packet switch networks, such as the Internet or company intranets, a so-called interworking function, IWF, is required. This is an external data server connected to the different data networks. The IWF translates the unstructured incoming packet switch data into circuit switch signals which can be understood by GSM. A firewall upstream of the IWF protects the GSM network from unauthorized access by hackers. In GSM Phase 2, only circuit switch data services are supported. The interworking function, IWF, integral to the MSC, connects the circuit switch GSM data traffic to the existing packet-oriented networks, in other words, the Internet, 
corporate networks, public data networks, and WAP servers. It converts protocols and adapts the data rate for the BSS. In GSM, the Public Land Mobile Network, PLMN, is a cellular network with a hierarchical structure. The smallest unit is the radio cell, which the BTS supplies with frequencies, or in other words, radio channels. It provides the network coverage. Several radio cells are put together to form administrative areas controlled by a BSC. Various areas controlled by one BSC each form a location area controlled by a VLR. It's also possible for a location area to cover one BSC only, or even one cell, if reasonable. If a mobile phone subscriber changes to a new location area, a location update takes place automatically. So the location of the subscriber is known to the network via a VLR linked to the MSC. If a BTS is in the center of exactly one cell, we speak of an omnidirectional radio cell. The BTS transmits its frequencies with omnidirectional characteristics and a high output. Omnidirectional radio cells are used particularly in relatively sparsely populated rural areas. In densely populated areas, though, the network must supply higher capacities. One way of doing this is the sectorization of radio cells. With a sectored radio cell, the BTS can supply up to three radio cells in three times 120 degrees with several frequencies each. On motorways, base transceiver stations are preferentially configured in two sectors. For example, the BTS transmits frequencies in two times 180 degrees. The cell is aligned along the course of the road to be covered. In densely populated cities, we often find a combination of omnidirectional cells and sector cells. This is because there can often be zones of missing coverage between sector cells. A superordinated omnidirectional umbrella cell takes over the radio supply for scattered individual mobile stations located in these locally occurring receptionless zones, and for rapidly moving mobile stations used on motorways and in high-speed trains. Rapidly moving mobile stations in particular are supplied via the larger umbrella zones in order to avoid as far as possible handovers taking place in rapid succession. In order to supply areas with a large number of mobile phone users, so-called micro cells are used. Thus, for example, BTS with a low output are used in underground stations. These take over the radio supply on the platform or, with special antennae, in the subway tunnels. There are several advantages of uh, GSM. The most obvious advantage of GSM is its widespread use throughout the world. According to the gsmworld.com, GSM has a harmonized spectrum, which means that even though different countries may operate on different frequency bands, users can transfer seamlessly between networks and keep the same number. The next technology which we are going to appreciate is the CDMA technology which is widely used in the mobile communication. Code Division Multiple Access CDMA is a channel access method used by various radio communication technologies. CDMA is an example of multiple access where several transmitters can send information simultaneously over a single communication channel. This enables several users to share a band of frequencies. To permit this without undue interference between the users, CDMA employs spread spectrum technology and a special coding scheme. CDMA is used as the access method in many mobile phone standards, IS-95, also called as CDMA-1, and its 3G evolution CDMA-2000, are often simply referred to as CDMA. But UMT is the 3G standard used by GSM carriers, also uses wideband CDMA or WCDMA as well as TDCDMA and TDSCDMA as its radio technologies. As stated in the previous slide, CDMA is used as the access method in many mobile phone standards. 
code division multiple access is a sort of multiplexing that facilitates various signals to occupy a single transmission channel. It optimizes the use of available bandwidth. The technology is commonly used in ultra high frequency cellular telephone systems, ba bands ranging between the 800 megahertz and 1.9 gigahertz. Code division multiple access system is very different from time and frequency multiplexing. In this system, a user has access to the whole bandwidth for the entire duration. The basic principle is that different CDMA codes are used to distinguish among the different users. Let us see how this CDMA technology is applied in mobile communication in this short video clip. With this, we come to an end of the session. However, it's important for us to do this activity which is posted in the discussion forum. So the above questions that you see uh, are posted in the discussion forum. Research and find the answers. Then post the solution by creating a thread in the discussion forum and named activity J GSM. Once you have posted your answers, you may leave. So see you in the next session. Bye for now. Thank you.